Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. In my game, I have a little bit of a flaw. As you can see, if I walk up to any of these NPCs, literally nothing on the screen changes. What you'll need to know is you can actually interact with half of these. If I walk up to this guy and press the E key, you can interact with them. So we're missing a key component to a game, which is on-screen messages. So in this tutorial, we're going to recreate the very famous press X or E to interact. And it's really simple to do. And as a bonus, I've got a cool font pack I found online a while ago, where it gives you custom keys as well. So, the first thing we need is we need our actual on-screen HUD. If you have one, you can skip this creation part. So I'm going to open my content browser here, and I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to create a new folder called UI. And in here, I'm just going to create a new user interface type widget blueprint, and I'm just going to call it, it'll be a type of user widget, and I'll call it WB HUD, the widget blueprint HUD. And this will be my main HUD that drives everything. But the first thing I'm going to add is just a canvas panel. There we go, so it's going to stretch out nicely. I'm going to make sure it's not a variable because we don't really need it. The next thing I'm going to search for is a rich, text editor a rich text block like so you might be thinking why a rich text block and not a normal text block a rich text block gives us the ability to use text styles meaning we can highlight different letters in it or use different fonts throughout the letters which will be something we'll come on to shortly so i'm going to just call this rtb underscore on screen interact there we go i'm just going to use the anchors up here and i'm going to press hold hold control and shift and just press the bottom one here i'm just going to click it to align it to the bottom and all i'm going to do is just set the position y to just something like minus 100 minus 200 something like that yeah and as a test in this text here i'm just going to type press e to interact as you can see it's absolute gibberish and that's because we've not assigned a text style yet i'm just going to do a few more things size content uh, yeah so we need to give it a text style and this text style is basically the style of the font what color do you want it what font what size what everything and they're really easy to set up as well so as you can see we don't currently have one so we need to go and create so inside my content i'm just going to create a new folder just called inside my ui i'm just going to right click and create a new folder called styles and then in here i'm going to right click miscellaneous data table and now from this i will select rich text style row it's already should already exist and just click ok and i will call this dt underscore style i don't know what else to call it i'm gonna open it up. there we go so as you can see we've got a very weird looking screen but it's really easy to use so the first thing we need to do is we need to tick add row at the top here and what i'll do with this row is i'll just call it default so this is the default default font that I want to use for all of my rich text editors that's going to use this. So I'm going to click it and open up the text style, colour and the font and basically just customise it. So I'll say for mine, I just want it to be white here and then I will search for outline somewhere. There we go. Under font, I will search for outline and I'll just give it a one outline and the colour will be black. So it'll have a white text with a black outline. The font, I will just set it to Roberto because it comes with it and the size, I'll just keep at 24 for now because I don't know what's going to happen. So I'll save that. If we come back into our hood, select our text and and then assign it a DT style, you'll need to compile first. You'll see it now says press E to interact and it's got a nice black border and it says exactly what we need, which is perfect. So I'm going to tap that and I'm just going to come up and make sure it's a variable and I'm going to search for visible and I'm going to set it to collapse so it's invisible. You can't see it, it's just invisible to the player. Now I'm going to go back to my first person character and I'm just going to add it after my event begin up here. So I'll come across and I'll just from the last thing I will call create widget. Then I will spawn my HUD. I'm going to promote it to a variable because then if I need to do anything with it later I've got access to it I'll call it HUD and I'll just move it into my UI category and then from here I will just add it to the viewport and then I'll add the player controller as the owning player just in case you've got multiple players it binds it to a specific player so you know it works correctly and I'll comment it add the main HUD there we go and now if I start the literally nothing will have changed it won't show it won't do anything but it is there as you can see nothing's happening so now what we need to do is create a couple of methods in order to show or hide this but we also need to customize its text which is really easy to do so i'm going to come up to the graph up here and i'm going to delete these existing ones off and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add a custom event called hide on screen interact and this one will be super simple it will just take our rich text box and it will literally set its visibility to collapse so that one's super simple so we call that one after we leave and it makes it invisible again the next one i will create another custom event called show on screen interact and for this one it will just do the exact opposite it, but it will make it visible like so and now we've got a way to show or hide it but we need to customize its tag because it, it might be very nice to just keep us press e to interact but we could technically use it for anything press e to interact press e to talk to such and such press e to talk to this npc it can really customize it whatever you want so i'm going to come in here and i'm going to click on my show
show screen interact and I'm going to add I'm going to add a new value called action and it'll be a type of text and I'm going to add another one called control and that will also be a type of text and what we can do with this is if I bump this visibility to the end I can get my rich text box again and I can now set the text of it like so from this text I can come in and do format text and then using this special format text is I can type in what I want it to say so by default I know it's going to say press something so the something I know will be the control so I'm just going to wrap it in a curly brace and type control and then I will do two and then again the action will be the final one so this might be press x to talk or press e to talk and now with this every time we call show we need to give it an action and a control and that will customize the text and then show it on screen and if we come back to our first person character here because this is where we actually choose to interact with them on my event tick where I find my line trace if you follow the previous tutorial you know how to set this up where I set the looked at actor to be visible I now need to show the press e to interact part I can drag out my hood and I can simply say show on screen interact like so and as you can see it's asking two controls perfect so the control for me will just be e because that's the key and the action will be to talk I'm just gonna put talk just for now super basic and then what I'm gonna do is where we set it to cleared so it doesn't use it anymore I'm just gonna come and set it to hide on screen interact because then we don't need it visible anymore if we stop looking at them it shouldn't be visible and then I've got another one here and then finally when you actually interact with them so here after we call interact then we need to stop interacting with them because otherwise it's just going to show throughout whatever happens and now we can try it so you can see nothing in the world's really changed but if I walk up to one of these NPCs talk I can talk to them it disappears as soon as I back out again it says E to talk again perfect and that ladies and gentlemen is a really quick way in order to add on-screen controls to your game And since we've made it able to be set dynamically every time we want it here, we can actually customize it ever so slightly more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my interface, interactable interface here, and I'm actually going to add a new function and I'm going to call it get interact text. And all I will do is I will set it as an output to have out and it'll be a type of text like so. And what this will give us the ability to do is instead of just saying talk, because your interact might not be talk, it might actually be pick up or explode, I don't know, anything you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag from this look on this look actor here and I'm just going to do get interactable text and I'm going to connect it up here like so format it a bit nicely and I'm going to set the out text to be the action here so it doesn't matter what the control is the controls are e I know the controls and then back on my NPC here I can implement this new get interaction text function here and then what I can do is I can literally return anything I want so for me on the NPC I want to say press e to interact with and then the name of the character I'm going to create a new variable called name and I'm just going to set it to text because then I can translate it at a later point. I'm going to make it eyeball visible. And for me, I'm just going to drag out again, just like before, and I will do format text. And before, where it just said talk, I will say talk to, and then curly brace, I'm going to put name. And then it'll ask for a name, so I can just drag in the character's name and place it like so. Compile and save. And now with that little change, if I just simply go around to each of my characters and add their name in, so now when we try the game, and now when I walk up to the characters, you will see press E to talk to Rusty McAllister. Or Awesome. So it's definitely working exactly how we want it to. However, I think it can look a little bit cooler. So what I'm going to do is jump back to my DT style here and I'm going to add an, I'm going to right click this row. I'm just going to duplicate and I'm going to call it important. I'm going to call it imp for important. And then what all I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply change text color from white to maybe a, a nicer orange, not something too deep, just something like that. And what I'm going to do when I'm the NPC here on the format text, the reason we've used the DT style is by default, it will use Use the default one but because we've added the other one now I can come in here and add an angle bracket and just type in and then close the angle bracket type whatever I want open an angle bracket again a forward slash then a close angle bracket just like and what that's going to give us the ability to do now we walk up to him now that we've added the new text style as you can see it's highlighted his name because he's a key character how cool is that very cool. Awesome. Now for the next cool feature I was going to show you for the final finale, there is a plugin by Shimera Prompt Font. And this is a special type of font that gives you access to all the different keys as a font so you can use it directly in. So as you can see, we have the plain alphabet here, which is just in the style of prompt font, which is okay. But then when you scroll down, you'll get to some icons and then game pads. So as you can see here, you've got the A key, the, the Y, the X, the B, the PlayStation ones, all of them. And then you've got keyboard ones, mouse ones, and a bunch of other ones. So now what 
what we can do is we can actually link this prompt font into our virtual game so we can actually use the font it's suggesting so it's really simple to do but you're going to want to save this link for later so when i'm going to i'm going to come in and i'm just going to simply hit code and download zip once you have it i'm just going to open it up and i'm going to find the two fonts here now i believe unreal likes an otf so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to jump into my unreal project and i'm inside the ui i'm just going to create a new folder called fonts and i'm going to paste this font inside and i'm going to jump back to unreal and as you can see it's detect the font the otf one so i'm going to click yes import it i'm happy for that to be imported and then i'm going to jump back to my dt style and i'm going to duplicate this default one i want it to be the white text and i'm just going to call it input and then instead of roberto i'm going to set it to prompt font there we go now if i go back to my bp player here where i put control is e and just like we've just done i'm going to replace it with angle bracket input close angle bracket e close angle brackets like so it will now start using the e key from prompt font there you go so now it's using a specialist e key and we can use any key we want so for example if you were to come back to the prompt font website here and you're using a controller and i think i set mine to circle so if i come to the circle here and click it copy to clipboard i can come back into my bp first person character and where the e key is i can delete it and just paste this special character in instead and this time when i try it and i walk up to them granted i'm still on keyboard and mouse at the moment it will say press circle to talk to them awesome we now have custom platform specific keys ready in our game to you now this is where we get to the floor unfortunately ladies and gentlemen but throughout all my research it doesn't look like the new enhanced input action tells you which platform is currently active you can only do that from c++ you can't do it in blueprints unfortunately meaning you can't super easily switch between which key controls you want a bit of annoying i know i'm still figuring out the c++ side so i'm not confident enough to show you that however i do have a nice little workaround that i can show you today so i'm going to come into my blueprints here and i'm going to right click and i'm going to create a new folder and i'm just going to call it enums and i'm going to open this up i'm going to come in i'm going to hit miscellaneous blueprint and i'm going to click enumeration and i'm going to call it e underscore platform i'm going to open this up if you've never used enums before they're going to change your life they're fantastic i'm going to add an enum here and the first one will be pc will be mouse plus keyboard like so and i'm going to open it again and i'm going to add a playstation and i'm going to add the xbox and you can add any other forms of platform you want so you, you could have oculus you could have the rift controllers the vive controllers the index controllers any you want so i'm just going to go with those three basic ones and using that i'm going to come into my bp first person character and i'm just going to add a variable called current control scheme and i'm going to simply set it to the e platform yes the e platform and then what i can do is tick the eyeball and then i can by default set a basic platform now so we can switch between them it's not ideal and if i do find a better way i will put out a better tutorial but for now this does mean you can export to different platforms for now this does mean you can show different controls so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come into my blueprints and i'm just going to create a new folder called structs and inside here i'm just going to right click blueprint structure and i'm going to call it s underscore control platform text and all this will have is it will have a variable called control name which will be a type of text and then i'm going to set a mouse keyboard text i'm going to set playstation text and i'm going to set one more of xbox text. and each of those will also be text like so and then inside the blueprints folder one more time i'm going to create a final data folder i'm going to add a new miscellaneous data table i'm going to set the row structure to be our s control platform text and i'm going to click ok and call it dt platform controls and as you can see in here we can add a new row and it was going to want us to populate a few details which is fine so for the row name i will call it interact and then for the control name i'll call it the interact as well for the mouse keyboard text i know it wants to be the e key so using this website i'm just going to find the e key i want a capital e so i'll click that one and i'll paste it in for the playstation text i know it needs to be a circle so i'll come down and click the circle and i'll paste it in and then for the xbox i don't actually know what the x is and for the xbox it appears to be a b key okay so we'll go and find the b key which is there and we'll click that and i'll paste that in there so now we have a data table which says for the interact depending which platform you're on pick one of these which means we can render it really simple so i'm going to close these off and i'm going to jump back into the player and i'm just going to create a new function here called platform input text. and then it's going to have an input which will be just input and it'll be a type of name not text it has to be a name from here i will drag off and do get data table row and i will bind in the input to the row name our data table will be our platform controls and then the out row will give us each of the controls we need to find perfect so if the row is not found here i will simply just type add a return node and i will set the output to be text and it'll be a type of like so so if they can't find it, it's to say if we do something dodgy i don't want the game to break so instead i'm just going to come and convert it to a text here and return it so if you type interact it'll just say interact if the row is found however then we need to actually switch
switched on the current control scheme. So I will come in and just type select. And what this is going to do is depending what value this our enum control scheme has, it will return a different value. And we can just drag in all of these values to the mouse and play keyboard, to the PlayStation, to the Xbox. Like so. And then from the row found, I can just come off and type turn and the text will be our new value. The final thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag off from here and just do format text and I'm going to plug it in here. Now I know every time I'm going to use this function, I'm always going to want it to wrap it in the, in the input font. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to set the format to be input, curly brace, input, and then I'm just going to end it just like so. And it will request the input, which will be the text there. So now every time we call this function, it will return some text with our specific format, meaning when I come back to the player's graph here, I can simply drag in the platform text function, but you can see it's requiring XX, which is a bit tedious. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to come in and where it says pure, I'm just going to tick it. So this pure will basically mean it's a function that doesn't really need an input or an output XX, meaning I can plug in the control and I know the interact is going to be, and the text I need is interact like so. So ladies and gentlemen, it's the final test. So now ladies and gentlemen, if I walk up to the character here and I say, it says press E to interact. So that's all normal. But if I press shift F one and come and find my first person character here and if i change the platform enum the current control scheme to say playstation and i walk up again it says press circle fantastic and then i can do the exact same for the xbox as well press b there you go so now we have a very good start for it so once we figure out or once unreal updates it we can actually remove the manual current control scheme and just let it set it automatically but then our system should be all fully plugged in to work and the next time you want some more platforms so say you've got one or something like that you can literally add it to the data table plug this get platform text in and you'll be there perfect thank you for watching ladies and gentlemen i hope you liked it if you've got any other recommendations for tutorials please let me know in the comments below please like comment and subscribe and i will see you and rusty next time that mustache is